Last video, we started doing a deeper crash analysis on Sudo and started looking into one particular interesting case. This crash happened inside of libc and the backtrace included this interesting function named lookup function. Let's see if that is useful for a Sudo exploit. Looking through the crash information from the fuzzer, specifically those which show NSS lookup in the call stack of the crashes, we can notice different places that ended up crashing in NSS lookup. One is called within some sudoers policy check get group ID lists, and the other one is also sudoers policy check, but more specifically in check user. Looking for some patterns in the heap analysis info, it's noticeable that one crash always had the same objects lined up, while the other crash had a bit more variety with the objects. Currently it's unclear which of these objects, if any, is the cause of the crash, but if we take a test case from the check user stuff, we seem to have a lot more consistency. The crashes had all the same objects there, and I prefer that, because heap stuff can be frickly, and this seems to be more reliable. So let's load one test case into GDB with our POC helper script. Here we break at the overflow location. So let's continue and run into the crash. In this case, we crashed in a string compare coming from NSS new service, NSS load library and NSS lookup. This is not the whole trace though. With BT or backtrace, we can see the complete one. It all started in sudo main, which called policy check, then sudo auth policy check, check user, sudo auth init, sudo pass wd init, sudo set spent, and then we leave sudo and head into libc. You can see how the address significantly changes and also the file path is not a known sudo source code file anymore. Quick interruption for a public service announcement. When I encounter a function I don't really know, I really like to use grep.app to quickly look up example usages. And when looking for set spend, we can see, for example, the snippet of code, which first calls set spend, followed by a loop over get spend. And in the main page of set spend, we can read the get spend function returns a pointer to the next entry in the shadow password database. The position in the input stream is initialized by set spend. So set spend initializes somehow the shadow database, so get spend can read entries. So this is basically code to interact with etc shadow. It seems like we want to get the etc shadow information of our current user. And that makes sense for sudo. We probably want to check the password the user enters for sudo. Now let's dig into the libc code. First of all, we have to know the libc version, which we can find with ldd minus minus version or executing the libc library. It doesn't do much, but it shows the version. So we have 2.31. Then I'm using the Elixir code browser to easily navigate the code. First, I try to find set spend as a file, but only found getspend.c. And in there, we only see a define for set func name set spend. Let's remember set func name and that the database name is shadow. Also, it includes NSS getxxend.c. So let's follow into getxxend. There is a function getFunkName, but that function is weird. I don't think it's related. So I went back and searched for setFunkName directly, and we can find a getxxend underscore r.c. No clue how that relates, some C magic, but in there we can find setFunkName as a function. And looking into the call trace, we can see that we call NSS set end, which is also called here. So this seems to match. And this function takes in the name of our function, so set spend. We can also have a quick peek into GDB again, going down the call stick. Here we call NSS set end, and as expected, the first parameter is the string set spend. We can also look at the other structs, for example, NIP but no values there that we have all written. Anyway, so we know the function NSS set end is defined in get NSS end underscore r dot c. And we know that next we call setup. Setup is called with the function name again, and it says here, cycle through the services and run their set xx end functions. Oh, I finally understand why it has xx in the name. Set SP end. SP is an identifier. 
So it should be read as set something entry. And looking at the set func name defined from earlier, we can find tons of functions with that pattern. Looks like SP is for shadow files. PW is for passwd files. GR stands for group. So it seems like this family of functions is used to somehow interact with these different databases of information. I just learned something new about Linux. Anyway, let's continue. We are now in setup and we passed in the function name setSPEnd. And in there we see a call to NSS lookup, which apparently looks up the first function. We are getting now really close to the crash, so let's walk a bit more careful. This function calls NSS lookup function quite a few times, and I don't know which of the calls resulted in the crash, but all of these calls take the function name and the service user pointer pointer. So let's look closer into what this service user struct is. It seems to be a linked list as it has here a pointer to the next entry. Then we have some lookup actions, no clue, and then we have a link to the underlying library object, as well as the name of the service like files, DNS, NIS and more. The file we are in right now is called nsswitch.h and these names actually relate to the values from etc nsswitch.conf. Let's have a quick peek at this file. NSS stands for name service switch. And to be honest, first time for me learning about this too. It's interesting. For example, passwd functionality is offered by files, a file. That's why there is the etc passwd file that is the underlying source for the password information. If you, for example, would have authentication not implemented with the passwd and shadow file, and for example, use LDAP, then you replace it here. And sudo as a software that has to check the user authentication asking for the password has to obviously look up, hey, where can I find passwd and the shadow data for users? In a basic Ubuntu system, it will be provided by these files, maybe systemd, but if you have a central user authentication via LDAP, it will be provided via LDAP. And all of this is handled by these NSS functions of libc. Sudo doesn't have to implement all of that logic. It simply can ask with libc functions for a particular user's data. Amazing. Anyway, now what is the service library struct? So this contains a name of the service and a pointer to the loaded shared library, as well as a pointer to the next service library. Cool. Now let's go back to the code. We now call one of those NSS lookup functions with the function name set spend and the pointer to the first service user entry. Here it is. Let's read briefly over this code. First we call tsearch, which seems to be a tree search for functions previously requested. And we pass in the function name and a pointer to niknown, the collection of known pointers. I do remember we definitely had crashes where objects on the heap were related to tsearch. So yeah, we might be able to influence this kind of linked list maybe somehow. But let's continue. So we search for this function and it's either known or not known. If it's known, this function seems to be dereferenced and prepared to be returned. But if it's not known, we now allocate a new known struct to prepare for the function we are about to find out. And we end up calling NSS load library with the struct. This function checks if the library is null, which is zero in our case, and then calls NSS new service passing in the name stored in the struct. Now this function calls string compare and we crashed in string compare. The ni struct seemed fine, so the cause of the crash must be the database object, but it's not printable right now. So I set a breakpoint specifically in NSS new service and restart the process. The first two breakpoint hits are long before our overflow, so just continue. But here we are at set command, the overflow happens here. So any next call to the function could be just before we crash. I continue again and see that it crashes so we know the one after set command is the one we are interested in. Redo it again and so here we are, just before the crash. And we can look at database, which has a pointer to library and that library object was clearly overwritten. And so of course, taking here the library pointer and then passing that name to string compare, we crash. 
So let's think about what happens if we control the name properly. Then this comparison would succeed and it would return our library pointer. Going further back, the NSS load library has now ensured that NI library points to an object. So if that would be the case, then we have this if case if lib handle is null. We overwrite the data too, so we can definitely ensure to set it to null. And look at that. It says here load the shared library. It constructs a shared object name with string copies using the ni name and then calls libcdl open. Damn, that would be an insane goal to reach. Then we could execute arbitrary code when a library we create is loaded. Unfortunately, we do not control ni name in this case. Hmm, well, maybe we can find a way to control it? Let's see about this next episode. Thanks again to all YouTube members and Patreons who make a video series like this possible. I'm always grateful to see my videos getting shared. I'm sure there are more people that would like to see such videos and you can really help to spread the word. Thanks.